On today's show, the Department of Energy awards Hyundai with a grant to develop a spark compression ignition engine. PPG creates a new process to reduce energy consumption when painting vehicles. And Bob Lutz explains what led to the demise of the Pontiac Solstice in Saturn's sky. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the voice of the global automotive industry. Due to flooding in an area of Honda's plant in Celaya, Mexico, the company has been forced to suspend production of the Fit and HRV. Auto Forecast Solutions reports that production of the models will not resume until November. And according to Ward's Auto Data, Honda only had 34 days of supply of the Fit at the end of August. So it won't be easy to find one of those vehicles until production resumes. But the company is in better shape with the HRV, which has a healthier 55 days supply. You know, an EV's range can decrease by as much as 40% in the winter when you factor in outside temperature, as well as that energy needed to heat certain components in the cabin comes from the battery. But the supplier Continental has developed a new intelligent thermal management system that will help cut those losses. New coolant flow control valves are used to better manage heating and cooling to only the places where they're needed. Continental says it's feasible to increase the winter range of an electric vehicle by around 25%, as well as speed up charging time when it's hot out. Last week, Tesla admitted it was having trouble getting Model 3s into customers' hands, but it's going to unique lengths to fix that. Tesla has launched a door-to-door service, bringing vehicles directly to customers. Elon Musk also tweeted out yesterday that Tesla has resorted to building its own car carriers to make deliveries. And once a new owner gets their car, it might just be a current Tesla customer who volunteered to educate them on their purchase. Still to come, Mercedes plans to start exporting GLCs built in India to the United States. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. And by Exxon Mobil. It may surprise you to learn the paint shop consumes nearly 70% of all energy at an automotive assembly plant. But paint supplier PPG has come up with a process that can cut paint shop energy consumption by up to 39%. It developed a specially formulated clear coat that cures at about 175 degrees Fahrenheit instead of the nearly 285 degrees like current systems do. This makes it possible to bake carbon fiber and composite parts with the body of the vehicle, resulting in better color uniformity between pieces in addition to simplifying the manufacturing process. The new system can be used with existing equipment, and the painting cycle and bake time is the same. OEMs could also reduce the physical footprint of their paint shop because fewer ovens are needed. Ferrari is the first automaker to adopt this low-cure paint technology. Billions of dollars are being invested in electric technology, but the internal combustion engine is not dead yet. Hyundai just received funding of nearly $5 million from the U.S. Department of Energy to conduct research and development on a new engine that would improve fuel economy and CO2 emissions. What makes this interesting is that Hyundai is looking to develop a spark compression ignition engine, likely similar to Mazda's Skyactiv-X engine, and it would be used on its own as well as for plug-in and mild hybrid vehicles. Last year, Ford began importing Echo Sports made in India to the U.S., and now another automaker will follow suit. Automotive News reports that Mercedes-Benz will export GLCs built in India to the U.S. The crossover is currently made in Germany, and there aren't any plans to build it at the company's plant in Alabama. This could be a bit of a risk for Mercedes. Not only is the GLC the best-selling luxury compact CUV in the U.S., It's also the company's number one vehicle in the country. And it wouldn't be surprising to see more automakers ship vehicles from India to the U.S., especially with the trade war the Trump administration is waging with China. Coming up next, 
Bob Lutz explains why GM dropped the Pontiac Solstice and Saturn Sky from its lineup. 2.4%. That's how much air pressure the average tire loses in a month, and it can make a big difference. Visit ButylRubber.com to see how ExxonMobil's Halo Butyl technology keeps tires inflated longer. Strength from the inside out. Do you remember the Pontiac Solstice and Saturn Sky? They were affordable two-seat roadsters designed to compete with the Mazda Miata. After some initial success, General Motors axed the models after just a few years. On last week's AutoLine After Hours, we were joined by Bob Lutz, the former vice chairman of GM, and he shared why the company killed those models and why either one didn't live on as a Chevrolet. The car was in the world of two-seat roadsters, very successful, had a very good uh, operating margin, but was killed by the fact that in a, it was originally planned for build in Toluca, Mexico. Um, in a huge deal where all kinds of things were renegotiated with the UAW, it was decided, well, okay, we'll keep the Wilmington, Delaware plant open and we'll put the solstice in it. So they put a 40,000, the solstice in sky, put a 40,000 unit per year uh, automobile into a plant that was sized for 300,000 vehicles a year. And so, yeah, the margin was good, but the allocated fixed costs just killed it. And, and I always, and I, at the time that they did that UAW deal, I said, okay, but remember, three years from now, when you tell me the solstice is unprofitable, I'm going to remind you that it was the UAW deal that did it, and not the fact that we didn't exercise cost control on the car. Yeah, 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 we'll remember. Oh, three years down the road, is this thing isn't making any money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's too bad. Hey, this and, is... And, and then <laughs> Wilmington was a plant we wanted to shut anyway. And uh, post Chapter 11, when we negotiated all the plant closing, Pontiac went away. Now the car could have been transferred to Chevrolet with, by basically taking the sky appearance, which was kind of very Chevrolet-like anyway, and take off the Saturn badges and put on a Chevy bow tie. It would have made a very credible Chevrolet. But moving it out of the Delaware plant into some other assembly plant was just financially prohibitive. So with great reluctance, we let it go. You can watch that entire interview with Bob Lutz right now on our website, autoline.tv, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. And for even more Autoline content, make sure you follow us on social media. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook by searching for the Autoline Network. And to find us on Twitter, just look for at Autoline. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and please join us again tomorrow.